Welcome back. Today I'm actually going to be able to show you guys if you have the problem like I do with an old home network that was installed by a builder over a decade ago that needs some updating. So today I'm going to show you guys how to go from old wiring to new. Um, I'm, as you can see, still in the basement, still getting some work done. Um, progress is being made even though it doesn't look like it that much. But that's not the intention of this video. This video is going to be uh, going through all my old wiring. I'm going to be tearing out the old stuff, putting in new things, updating everything, and making it nice and tidy. So let's get to it. All right, sorry about the lighting in here. I don't have a whole lot of lighting in this basement area until I get all the, the recessed lights and stuff put in. But this is the current state of what I'm working with. This is our Verizon router. Fios is what we have here at my house. Um, this system was put in by our home builder. In 2007, as you can see, uh, we actually used to have a home telephone here. <laughs> back, back in 2007, we actually wired a bunch of our rooms with home phones because, I mean, that's how I grew up. I had a phone in my room. So, anyway, I figured I'd do the same thing here. What I'm going to do in this video is actually show you we're going to convert these, which I actually got lucky, by the way, because my home builder actually ran Cat 5e as the phone line so I'm actually just going to unplug these here and put and convert them using these are keystone jacks to do to redo the outlets upstairs and in this box some RJ45 connectors and I will convert the phone lines into Ethernet so I'm actually going to get this stuff cleared up cleaned up and out of the way I got a new rack that I'm going to mount here to the wall let's get started Actually, one thing I forgot to mention before I get started on that is um, I'm actually going to convert these to just go straight into the, uh, the switch. I bought a 16-port switch because I'm going to be expanding the net home network some. And so right now i got to actually run through the house and test all this stuff to see which one goes where. These, are, these blue lines are two new ones that I ran to actually uh, as, as part of my basement finishing project. But I ran these two new blue wires, so these original yellow ones are the the ones the builder put in so I'll I'll have to go and chase these three to find out which rooms they actually go to in my upstairs so that's the first part of this project then I'll come down here and label them that way I know what goes where and then we'll move on to getting the new rack put up all right now I know the lighting is terrible in here so just kind of bear with me for a minute but I was able to trace the wires and do a little bit of testing to see where these three actually went um, so what I did was I went ahead and made some quick labels for them as you can see here Hopefully you can see that little blue labels One of them goes to my office one of them goes to bedroom number two and one of them goes to bedroom number three So what that leaves me with now are these two lines Which I know one of them goes into the kitchen was my old kitchen phone and one of them is to the master bedroom so these lines I'm actually going to pull out now and then we're going to punch them down into a new RG45 connector plug them into our router and then we're going to go upstairs and test and see actually which one they are. Okay. So now I have these two, I'm going to pull these two out of the way. So those two are now out. So now what I'll do is uh, cut this back and trim them a little bit and then that way you can actually uh, get these plugged into a new RJ45 connector. Then I'll be able to get them plugged into the router and we'll do another test. That way I'll know exactly where all these wires lead upstairs in the house. And then we can actually start replacing everything, um, all the hardware. All right, so I got the cable snipped here. Now I'm gonna actually start peeling this back so that way I can expose the wires underneath to then get them ready to be crimped onto a new RJ45 plug. You're going to want to peel back, I don't know, a couple of inches worth of the um, sheathing to just get this wire exposed. You pull a little wrap out of the way. So you're going to want it to look kind of like that. Now you got your twisted pairs. So you can actually get them untwisted, get them lined up. All right, and it'll look kind of like that before you get started. So now. I'm going to try and straighten these out a little bit as much as I can so that they're not all warped. When you try to push them into the uh, connector, you want them to be a little bit straighter just so that they actually sit down in there okay. 
they have a tendency to go pointing off in the other directions and it's hard to get them down inside that um, connector tip. It doesn't have to be perfect but just try to make it a little bit straighter that way it, it kind of seats itself in there. So ultimately what you're going to try and do is get these down into some kind of straight order like this. You're going to get them kind of looking like this and then what you're going to want to do is take that pair of dikes and cut them as straight as you can because you want this to fit all the way down into the connector so that all the pieces go all the way down to the end. So we're going to do that now. Alright, so now we got them lined up. You want to put them in order, which I've already done. I did it off camera so you can see uh, a little bit better. But you want to have it as uh, white with green stripe, green. White with orange stripe, blue. White with blue stripe, orange. White with brown stripe, brown, going from left to right. Now this is an A configuration. You can also do it in a B configuration. Modern uh, routing doesn't really matter that much anymore, but you used to have to do this for crossover cables and stuff like that. But anyway, as long as you make both ends um, the same, it should be completely fine. So I'm just following the A configuration here. You can do it as well. Um, matter of fact, I got a picture of it here on my phone. All right here's a picture of it. Easy to follow on your phone. Right. Try to make that as straight as I can. See how that's nice and straight? Now I'll get my connector and we'll put it in. Also, you want the clip. Can't see it very well, but there's a clip right here. You want that to be facing away from you when you put this together. So just double check. White, green, green. White, orange, blue. White, blue, orange. White, brown, brown. And you can see as you get these as you get this really close you want this to be really straight and it's difficult because they're all this is why we straightened the twisted pair when we first got started so we can get them all facing in the right direction now I'm just going to double check it before I crimp it just to make sure that I got the colors in right now the connector's on right here so we can actually see I'll get it closer a little bit hopefully it focuses but you can see that there's a little bit of the jacket kind of inside of the connector itself that's a that's a good cable right there because this hard plastic will protect all of those uh, wires on the inside. So you want to try and have a, just a little bit of that sleeve um, from the sheathing going up into the connector. All right, now I got my crimping tool all the way flush, so it's all the way down inside here, and then hold tight and crimp. That's it, done. Alright, so now I'm going to run upstairs, I'm going to pull the other one out, and I'm going to uh, punch it down on a um, RG45 keystone, and then we'll be good to go. Alright, so now we're set up upstairs, we're going to pull this faceplate off and get this converted. Hold on to those screws there, pop this faceplate out. set the builder who decided to just plug this random trash into my wall for the last 13 years. Thanks guy. What a dick. How much other trash did you bury in the wall? What a freaking dickhead. Look at that. This has been sitting in my wall for 13 years. Jeez. Nice. Anyway, now I'm going to take this guy out, apply pressure, and pop. Comes right off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is called a win. Uh, every once in a while in life, you get a win. Today is my day. I noticed that the uh, installers, the builder, actually punched this keystone down already. Um, as an A. So what I did downstairs will actually work already. So what I did was I brought my laptop up, plugged it in, plugged in my um, RJ45 connector that I just finished downstairs in the basement and ran a speed test and it's working. Now let me show you since this was already done for me thankfully made it a little bit easier. Let me show you if this was not done what you would have to do to convert your telephone line 
into um, one of these. What you have here is a keystone and if I can actually get it to focus you can see clearly it has an A and a B on both sides A and B. Now what you would do if this was not actually already done properly is you would cut this off right about here pull the sheathing back and then separate out the twisted pairs like I did downstairs in the basement and you would kind of align them like this right then you would kind of align them like this so that way they fit into your new jack and the nice thing is, is they have the colors already laid out for you so all you have to do is follow the A colors right on this side it would be green white with green stripe orange white with orange stripe white with blue stripe blue white with brown stripe brown you put the wires down into these little slots like this and it would look similar to that although I would do it a little bit cleaner the builder kinda just probably did it rushed as you can tell they just threw a bunch of trash in my outlet which is ridiculous but then when you have it looking like this you take the punch down tool you put the punch down tool on top of making sure that the cutting side it has a little part that says cut the cutting side goes to the outside of your keystone right so you take the tool and you literally slide it down on each of those eight slots punch it all down then when you're done there's a little cap that goes on the top to secure all of those you take this, then you plug it back into the faceplate, just like that. And then put your faceplate back on, and you're done. So since this was actually already done for me, making it easy, I just went ahead and showed you what you would have normally done if that was not already uh, done properly. So now I just need to go and trace the other two that are in the house, and then I'll get back downstairs and put all my new rack in, and we're ready to go. All right, I've made some progress now. Got the old box out. It's in there on the floor. Took a little bit of effort to cut the top off to get these coax cables out. But we look to be in good shape for now. So I will try to clean this up a little bit. I didn't realize that this was, they had left a gigantic hole in the drywall behind this thing. So looks like I'll have a, maybe a little drywall patching to do. But anyway, in the meantime, I think I'm just going to go ahead and set the other one up and we'll go from there. All right, I got some progress made now. Um, I cut out a new piece of drywall to put in there to put it, uh, I didn't have, I don't have any tape or anything to mud around it, but I cut it, you know, fairly snug so it will fit well. Um, I've now got my rack unboxed. So I'm gonna take this and uh, that will be mounted here shortly. Um, it came with a nice uh, template. So the template is going to go on the wall like this and I'll level it out with a laser and then put the holes in the wall to mount it. I have to move my Verizon ONT power so that is going to be uh, pulled out of the wall and then remounted over a little bit further. Um, I have a PDU that I'm going to be plugging all this into as well so this should have, um, it'll look real nice when I'm done so I'll, uh, I'll keep filming as I go along but I mean obviously it's not really worth me filming actually what I'm doing here with this because it was basically just me removing the old rack uh, Which left the gaping hole here then I just cut a piece of drywall to fit in which is now in place now I'm gonna measure um, To put the new rack in and then I'll film that when I get that done too. All right, so next steps. I got the rack mounted on the wall Can't see very well, but there are four screws that hold this to the wall that go actually into the studs behind the wall. So it should be nice and strong. Um, I've got the Verizon router sitting up here now with the uh, line in, plugged in. I have a nice PDU that I'm getting ready to mount to the rack. I'll, rack, I'll mount that down here and we'll get that powered in. I'll be able to plug all the power into that. I think it's an 8 
It has eight plugs, either six or eight plugs. I'll do all the other cable management. We'll turn that spaghetti into something that actually looks a little bit more professional. And we'll be done. All right, a little bit more progress going on now. I got the switch mounted, and I've got my PDU mounted. I've got the router sitting here on top with the, um, the feed. These are the cable lines that I've got um, mounted up over here to the side. We cut the cord a long time ago, so we don't really even watch cable anymore, but I mean, the wires are already run, so we'll just leave them in. Um, this is the power for the ONT for Verizon, so that I got that mounted to the side here with the cable coming up to the PDU. I'll need to figure out a way to, I don't have any, normally what I'll do is uh, tape things up with Velcro, but you can see I've got blue painters tape on it right now, but I'll have to go get some Velcro and kind of get these cables cleaned up a little bit later. But for right now, that's just gonna have to be that way until I can get some stuff to actually cable manage that properly. So now all I gotta do left is get these sorted out and then route them down through here and then up into the front and have them plugged in. We'll call it a day, I'll turn everything on and then we'll have a nice clean setup. All right, it's all done. It took me a couple hours because I was tracing wires and doing all that stuff at the very beginning, but it's all finished. Here's the end result. You can actually see now, uh, I did some cable management. You'll have to forgive the usage of blue painter's tape. I'll come back with some uh, Velcro strips to actually get that looking uh, a little more professional here. And I also have to do something with the way that these cables are, the power cables are all strapped around. But um, as you can see, that looks much better than it did before. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the way that that turned out. Down in the description, I'll put links to all of the items that I used for this, the rack, um, the, the power distribution unit, um, the switch as well um, and then uh, I'll also put down in the description links to the punch down tools that I used um, big shout out to my brother-in-law Lee who actually let me borrow those uh, so that I didn't have to go buy those punch down tools um, that was a big help so I think I appreciate that thank you very much um, you know for a minimal investment you can have a fairly professional looking setup um, like this um, it's really actually it's really not that difficult to go ahead and do it yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully if you found it helpful, uh, you can leave me a like or a comment down below to let me know if uh, someone actually messed up the wiring in your house or whatever it is that you got going on. So anyhow, um, stay tuned. I'll have some more videos coming soon.